that and they got that from Mandalorian about uh, the White House. Sorry about that, Dave. I, I apologize. Nope, and the phone just keeps on ringing when I call him. All right, Mark, thanks so much. Uh, it actually worked out perfectly because I was muted on YouTube, so nobody heard it. It was perfect. But they did hear you, actually, so no worries. Uh, the FOIA, though, could you remind me what you got it for? Sure. I just wanted to verify that the DOJ was looking into or doing something with Citadel. I know we saw that, but we really don't have any verification. Let me know when you get any information uh, from the FOIA on the DOJ. That'd be really good to hear. Will do. We're taking a look at the meeting minutes from the 2022 FOMC meeting. Now, this is already getting priced into the market, and you can see it in the, uh, you know, pump, if you will, even though the, the Fed was pretty hawkish. In the news, you know, the S&P was negative at some point today and is now up about 0.81%. Let's take a quick look, though, while we're at it. Looking at the markets right now after the FOMC meeting minutes were released, um, Sundials at 39 cents and is in danger of being delisted if it does not squeeze in upwards in price soon. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will take, but I'm assuming it takes a few days uh, for that to happen. At least a few days for that to happen. Uh, AMC's got a dollar increase at 11.50 and GameStop's up 24% today. The S&P is currently up 0.82%. At the moment, the NASDAQ has pumped. The NDX actually has pumped about 1.5%. Russell 2000 about 1.7%. And the 1000 just under 1 percentage point. SPY is hanging out right now at this moment around 396 and change. Let's take a look at the most, the, the FOMC meeting minutes that were released today. Uh, I've got some great friends here in the in the think tank, including uh, Pantheon AMC. You can find them on YouTube. Make sure you guys check out Pantheon AMC for some broad macro econ and market related stock market information uh, that is also uh, is also related to AMC uh, much more than people can imagine at this point. Uh, because unfortunately, the issues that we're seeing are. Uh, related to our entire financial system and have much more to do so with financial policy and less to do so with meme stocks. The meme stocks just so happen to be, they just so happen to be uh, one of the uh, victims of these endeavors. endeavors. But the, uh, first of all, the reverse repo, the overnight repurchase agreement operations, are going to be increased. Now, Pantheon, you can't confirm that currently the overnight RRP is at 0.5%, right? Um, I have to take a look into that. It is. I will assure you that, my friend. It was at 0.5%. It was recently increased from 0 0.05 to... Actually, I'm incorrect. I misspoke. It was increased from 0.05% several months ago to 0. 0.25%. Now it's being increased from 0 0.25 to an offering rate of 0.8%. That's an overnight bailout 
with a per counterparty limit of 160 billion dollars per day. Let me share my screen so you guys, so you know, you guys in the think tank can follow along if you'd like to. That's what we're now seeing. The reverse repurchase program is, uh, you know, two million dollars. Uh, two, sorry, almost two trillion dollars on a daily daily basis. I think uh, I believe that Pantheon posted this just a little while ago in the think tank, and I appreciate that. Uh, it's here in the Federal Open Market Committee meeting minutes and they state although overall economic activity edged it down in the first quarter household spending and business fixed investment remained strong job gains have been robust in recent months and the unemployment rate has declined substantially inflation remains elevated reflecting supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic higher energy prices and broader price pressures the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is causing tremendous human and economic hardship. The implications for the U.S. economy are highly uncertain. The invasion and the related events are creating additional upward pre pressure on inflation and are likely to weigh on economic activity. In addition, COVID-related lockdowns in China are likely to exacerbate supply chain disruptions. The committee is highly attentive to inflation risks. Events are creating additional upward pre pressure. Excuse me. Hold up. Someone needs a mic, please. And are a likely microphone to check. On economic activity. Thank you very much for that. The committee seeks to achieve maximum employment and inflation at the rate of 2% over the long run, over the longer run. With appropriate firming in the stance of monetary policy, the committee expects inflation to return to its 2% objective and the labor market to remain strong in the longer run. <laughs> in support of these goals, the committee decided to raise the target range for the federal funds rate to three quarters to 1% and it and anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate. In addition, the committee decided to begin reducing its holdings of its treasury securities and agency debt and agency mortgage-backed securities on June 1st, 2022, as described in the plans for reducing the size of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet that were issued in conjunction with this statement. In assessing the appropriate stance of monetary policy, the committee will continue to monitor the implications of incoming information for the economic outlook. They will approve a half percentage point increase in the primary credit to 1% effective May 5th, 2022. It was agreed at the next meeting that the committee would be held on Tuesday, Wednesday, June 14th. So the next meeting is on June 14th. So they increased it on May 5th, half a percentage point. And at this point, they're going to raise the target range for the federal funds rate. The Board of the Governors of the Federal Reserve System voted unanimously to raise the interest rate paid on reserve balances also to 0.9% effective May 5th. We are now going to be moving up for the federal funds rate to three quarters to 1%. So we're going to be looking at a 1%. Uh, that was basically a 50 basis point interest rate increase. In addition, the FOMC said policy may have to move past neutral and into restrictive territory. The minutes basically indicate that the members are, are hopeful that they can bring down inflation, but concerned about financial stability risks. Uh, the officials said earlier this month that, and they stress that they need to raise interest rates quickly and possibly more than markets anticipate to, to tackle inflation. Uh, 
and they they at this point have not increased rates more than 50 basis points and it's not going to make a big of a difference the fed continues to say that they're watching inflation and the upward the upward pressure caused by the the russian issues and, and china supply chain disruptions are gonna further further increase our inflation issues even further mm -hmm. therefore those are not really something that is going to be affected it's not going to be enough of a change on on the economy and and on the outlook if it was the stock market wouldn't be up as much as it is today you know it, for this news to come out and then the spy to be up you know more than half a percentage point recovering from negative territory uh it's it's pretty much a fucking joke They're going to begin selling off uh, securities, uh, let's see here, according to them, about $60 billion per month. For Treasury securities, the cap will be initially set at $30 billion per month uh, to reduce their their balance sheet. And after three months, it'll increase uh, to $60 billion a month. Uh, this decline in, in holdings of Treasury securities under this monthly cap will include Treasury coupon securities and to that extent, coupon maturities. For agency debt and agency mortgage-backed securities, the cap will initially be set to 17.5, and after three months, increase to 35 billion. Uh, reserve balances will take a long time to decline. In this sense, and Jerome Powell basically went out of his way to stress that the central bank is is working on taming inflation at this moment though it seems like they're more concerned with keeping people in the market with keeping retail investors money in the market and less with actually taming inflation the same issues that i'll show you here that we just discussed are issues that we've been talking about on this channel since last year The reason for this is because the Federal Reserve is purposely keeping their eyes wide shut on this. They're saying that the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is causing tremendous human and economic hardships and that the implications for the United States economy are highly uncertain. That those events are creating additional upward pressure on inflation and are likely to weigh on economic activity. In addition, COVID-related lockdowns in China are likely to exacerbate supply chain disruptions. The com they, they, they say over and over again that they're highly attentive to inflation risks, yet are doing absolutely nothing, nothing to curb inflation that they should be doing. As a matter of fact, the Fed bought $180 billion worth of securities last month. The Fed added $180 billion mm -hmm. worth of assets to the balance sheet in May. I'm sorry, Jay from March. Yep, May. So far. Many thanks to Mac Ten Suburban Drone on Twitter for coming out. Um, you know, also with this excellent chart on the S and P five hundred. He says at the same level of decline that attended the past two bailouts, we are to believe in three weeks that the Fed will increase tightening by four. 100% 4x tightening with two rate hikes and double quantitative tapering or there's going to be a smoking crater if you've been watching this channel you're also aware of an executive order that takes place next week and that for the next two weeks beginning tomorrow may 26th the thrift savings plan for federal employees and military employees sorry yeah federal and military personnel federal employees will be unable to to access their funds and lock in gains or prevent further losses if the stock market does collapse in one way or another. Bless you. Meanwhile, the spy is acting a complete fool and the Fed is trying to get us to believe that they're going to increase tightening 
with two rate hikes and doubling quantitative tapering, it doesn't make any sense. And then you've got an executive order that threatens to take over 75 different companies out of commission, Chinese stocks, Chinese military companies. And uh, there's billions of dollars of assets worth of exposure there as well. Evergrande's, China's largest property developer, had $4.18 billion worth, RMB, not dollars, RMB worth of assets uh, seized. This article came out just a couple days ago, 523-2022. That showed that the additional judgment debtor information on Evergrande Real Estate Group Ever, all of them, basically, Petroleum, the real estate developer, and Rise Eagle Worldwide Limited, last Friday, uh, were subject to a matter of enforcement of around 4.18 billion RMB uh, worth of assets seized. And then, just yesterday, uh, I'd like to thank uh, everybody in the think tank, including uh, Allison for this one. Uh, Evergrande restructuring plan may delay as financial advisor resigns. Just yesterday, Evergrande's joint financial advisor, Admiral, Harbor, Harbor, excuse me, Admiral T. Harbor Capital has resigned as foreign media cited sources. The resignation may cause the company to, una- to be unable to announce its preliminary restruct- restructuring plan as slated in July, and that it may have to postpone the plan until further in third quarter of 2022 or fourth quarter of 2022. They have to re they have to postpone this not because Admiralty Harbor Capital has resigned but because they don't actually have a preliminary restructuring plan in place. It's been proven time and time again that they cannot pay their bills. Evergrande is a zombie company. And this isn't just Evergrande. There are hundreds of Chinese developers defaulting right now. This means commercial mortgage-backed securities are going to tank globally. Credit default swaps are going to skyrocket. And entire portions of the market are going to collapse and just skyrocket to the fucking moon. Jinky Property seeks payment extension on 1.24 billion yuan of onshore bonds to avert a default. That's just their onshore bonds. They're not even talking about their offshore bond payments. Jinky Property is seeking creditors agreement to extend the payment for most of the outstanding $188 million of onshore bonds. This company has billions and billions of dollars worth of debt. They can't pay $188 million. What do you think is going to happen? Gee, maybe their assets are going to get seized. They're going to come out with some bullshit restructuring report, and then they're going to end up going bankrupt. Jinky We're going to be forced to take on a CCP partner in the deal, and we know what their reaction is going to be to bondholders outside of China. Yeah, go shit. <laughs> That's pretty much what uh, outside bondholders are told. You know, uh, offshore bondholders. Uh, the Chinese do not care about offshore bondholders whatsoever. Not in the slightest bit. So, Jinky Property Group asked creditors to extend the payment date on its one one point two five billion yuan principal plus the five percent coupon. After investors exercised their put option, which requires Jinky to pay May twenty eighth, two thousand twenty two. The vast majority of the bondholders face value of 1.25 billion yuan exercised the put option. And they said, quote unquote, given the balance sheet situation, cash collections from sales and liabilities, we hope to extend this bond for one year to have the time to recover our cash flow. Better, better stated, we don't have the money to pay you. Give us an extension or you're not going to get paid anyway. China's prices of new homes fell for the first time in seven years in April, 
while the prices of lived-in homes declined for the eighth consecutive month. Authorities have ramped up measures to revive the market as the central bank on Friday slashed the five-year loan prime rate reference for home mortgages by a bigger than expected 15 basis points. But for those of you that are unaware, even after this happened a few days ago, China's stock market continued to decline. Uh, Jinky stock shed 7.3% to 3.43 yuan in Shenzhen. The trading of its property management arm, Jinky Smart Services Group, halted on Monday pending the release of an announcement. Its 696 million yuan outstanding onshore bond due July 8th was indicated at 66.9 cents on the dollar on Monday, down from 84 cents on the dollar on Friday. These, this is how fast the movements are going to happen in the real estate and stock market and bond and crypto sectors when, they really be, when, when, when it really occurs. There's going to be many, many more incredibly volatile movements than this. Jinky will pay interest for the bond on May 28th and pay 10% of the principal immediately after the extension agreement, according to company executives, and another 5% respectively at the end of July and August. 5% of the bond is all they can pay. And not even this month, that's in July and August. And they expect to pay 5% per month. They said if the extension can't be agreed to, this bond will default and to cause cross defaults of some other outstanding bonds, so the company may have to go through an overall debt restructuring. S&P Global Ratings downgraded Jinky's long-term issuer credit rating into junk on Monday to B- from B+, and withdrew the issuer credit rating and issue rating at the company's request. That's the new game, people. The new game for these companies, these Chinese developers, before they actually default and get rated as complete garbage, they just ask S&P Global and Fitch Ratings to pull them from their ratings lists. That's all. It's as simple as that. And thus, they begin to commit bankruptcy fraud, much in the same way that Evergrande has been doing until... They're pushed into bankruptcy court by guys like Dr. Marco Metzler, former Fitch ratings analyst and, and current founder of Deutsche Hell Market yeah. Screening Agency. Hell fucking yeah. At the same time as China's commercial mortgage-backed securities and residential mortgage-backed securities are, are taking it, you know, just are, are in the shitter, basically. Uh, mortgage rates in the States are up more than they've been in a long time. And as of May 25th, 845 this morning, the average mortgage interest rate for a standard 30-year fixed mortgage is now 5.28%, which is a 0.12 decrease percent from last week for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage. However, adjustable rate mortgages, ARM mortgages, better known, uh, for standard 15-year I'm sorry, this says 15-year fixed rate mortgages is 4.6%, also 0.16. Here's the ARM mortgages, the 5.1. Average rate is 3.91%, which is a 0.06 increase from last week's 3.85. With an adjustable rate mortgage, you'll most often get a lower interest rate than a fixed rate mortgage, for example, the first five years. But you could end up paying a lot more or less. And most of these people put themselves in a situation where when 5-1 adjustable rate mortgages increase rapidly uh, along with the 15 and 30 year mortgages increasing rapidly, uh, they will not be able to afford it because the reason that they need this 3.85 and 3.91% mortgage is usually because they cannot afford the home or do not want to pay the 5.3% interest rate. However, if they plan to sell at the same time as everybody else, uh, it's not going to be looking good in our real estate market in the near in the near to short term future. We mentioned in the past, I mentioned several times. Let me share my screen here. I mentioned several times that uh, the reverse repurchase overnight bailout is getting increased. And here's a good explanation of what is the RRP. This is from September of 2019. 
This video came out on September 20th of 2019, which is just moments, uh, sorry, which is the day after, the day after the, the Federal Reserve had to step in to save the RRP, the overnight repurchase market. Liquidity crunch in the repo market. Bra overnight borrowing costs surged Monday and Tuesday nights, and interest rates spiked to almost as high as 10% for some transactions, raising questions over whether or not the Fed is losing control of interest rates. But what is the repo market, and why is Wall Street worried? It's time for Yahoo You. Brian Chung is here with the lesson. All right, Adam, well, class is in session. And if you recall, it's been a pretty crazy week for the repo market. In fact, a lot of people maybe didn't even know that was a thing before this week. We saw a liquidity crunch Monday night into Tuesday night that saw some banks and broker dealers paying as much as 10%, as you mentioned, for overnight funds. But what exactly is it? How exactly does all of this work? Well, let's explain this a little deeper with our explanation here. So let's use an example. We have two banks. We have the Bank of Julie, Julie Hyman, who unfortunately is out of the office today. But we also got Adam. So you're sitting down here understanding exactly what's going on here as the head of the bank of Adam and what basically this is all about is getting funding to operate day to day so this is all overnight it's very temporary it's very quick and it's fairly simple if you think about it basically well, the bank outs. of Julie in this case has a number of treasuries and this could be other securities as well not just treasuries that needs financing needs to get backed by cash now she can hold those on her sheet but at some point she's gonna need the cash to hold that in her balance sheet. Now, Adam has a lot of cash that he can offer. So he can sell the cash to Julie overnight for a fee. So he's gonna charge an interest rate on that. But in exchange as collateral, Julie will offer treasuries. This is why this is called a repurchase agreement, which is the long name for a repo, because she's selling the treasuries, the securities to Adam, and then repurchasing it for cash later on. Now, this is the first, uh, that, that's first at, at night, but when we get to the morning, and our producer put my face in the sun here for some reason that I don't understand, but when it comes back to morning again, the treasuries have to get returned back to Julie, and then Adam gets the cash back, again, closing the loop here for the overnight repo. Now, why does any of this matter, and why did we end up seeing a liquidity crunch on Monday? Well, if you consider that it all has to do with the amount of cash that's available in the system, not just by the Bank of Adam, but by all the bank reserves in the system, if there's fewer cash available, but a high demand to fund it, that means that there should, in theory, be a bid for interest rates going up as people demand more money to lend that money overnight. And that's exactly what we saw. So this right now is the uh, excess reserves available in the system. So what we've seen over the past uh, three years or so is that it's actually been a pretty precipitous decline in the amount of cash Toxic that's available in the system. Why is that? Because the Federal Reserve has been shrinking its balance sheet. Keep in mind the Federal Reserve controls the money supply. And ever since 2017, the Federal Reserve began Remember, shrinking its balance sheet, which then took the amount of cash available in the system out of the banking system. Now, that explains the bid up that we then saw as a result of those changes. So what you're looking at here is the uh, effective federal funds rate. This is the amount of interest that players in the space actually end up paying. Keep in mind the Federal Reserve has a target range, right? Now, what you're looking at is what actually exists in the market. So this right here, if I can point this out, was the spike that we saw at the beginning of the month that shows just how much people were paying. So the Federal Reserve has a target range. It would like the interest rates to stay in that range. But we saw a bid up because of the fact that the lack of cash, despite the fact that there was a rush for financing those treasuries and other types of securities overnight, ended up pushing the price and the cost of this overnight borrowing yes, up. It did. Now, the next chart that I'll show you shows the actual federal funds range, the upper bound and also the lower bound that the Federal Reserve has targeted every time it has those big Fed meetings that everyone dials into. So before Wednesday, the federal funds target range was between 2% to 2.25%. You can see the blue is the high end and the orange is the bottom line. What we saw on Monday night into Tuesday night was that the effective federal funds rate actually ticked up to 2.3%, which is actually above the high end of the Federal Reserve's target range. What this means, did the Federal Reserve lose control of its interest rate policy? It's a sobering reminder that the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy is actually aspiring. It's not necessarily exactly put into place. It uses these kinds of repo market changes in order to set what they call a floor, which is why the New York Fed ultimately had to step in and provide some extra liquidity in the form of its own repo market which it set at an interest rate that it felt was comfortable enough to be back in this range. Now, what you haven't seen is that there's been a lot of change. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve then changed its target range from 2% two, uh, 2 to 2.25% to 2.25% to 1.75%. 
Since then, the Federal Reserve also implemented a new set of overnight repo facilities, again, offered by the New York Fed to try to meet some of the liquidity needs for this repo market. And what we saw actually as of this morning was that on Thursday, yesterday, after the Fed changed its policy, it ended up going back down to 1.9%. So basically back in range of the Fed's new change here. So for right now, now it seems like the Federal Reserve has gotten a grip back on its interest. For right now, it seems like the Federal Reserve has gotten its grip back on interest rates. This was in September, September 19th of 2019. And this was literally the day after, as you can see here, September 20th, 2019 on the news. Why is this so important? Because that's the day that the Federal Reserve had to step in to save the overnight repo market. The liquidity crunch due to these toxic derivatives is killing these fucking banks. It's killing these banks and prime brokers. And that, I know a lot of you don't understand this. The COVID doesn't matter where it came from exactly at this point. But what does matter is that our central banks and our governments used it as a way to artificially print 40% of all U.S. dollars in existence in the last 18 months. It was an excuse to artificially hyperinflate the U.S. dollar to save and bail out these banks and continue this fucking Ponzi fiat scheme for as long as possible. And I believe the music has stopped because at this point, the Federal Reserve cannot lower interest rates. They cannot print more money without causing further hyperinflation. And if anyone's wondering, is this exclusive to just the US? It's not. Just yesterday was announced that China's central bank conducted 10 billion yuan, 1.5 billion US dollars of reverse repos to maintain liquidity in their banking system too. They set their interest rate for the seven day reverse repos at 2.1% in a move to keep liquidity within their banking system reasonably stable. Right, because a reverse repo is a process in which the central bank purchases securities from commercial banks through bidding with an agreement to sell them back in the future. They're doing the exact same thing at China to prop everything up. That tells you quite the story, guys. Exactly. They're working so hard to prop everything up. And at the, mean, at the same time, they've got a million different things working against them. For example, a fucking meltdown. Let's go take a look at this. I've, I've seen this in the past and I've enjoyed reading it. This is from the National Law Review. It seems some people don't understand Executive Order 14032 that comes into effect on June 3rd of 2022. Uh, on June 23rd of 2021, President Biden issued an executive order. 14032 addressing the threat from securities investments that finance certain companies of the People's Republic of China. In short, communist Chinese military industrial companies will have their collateral no longer be usable on exchange traded funds and on the United States and New York Stock Exchange stock markets. Uh, now, Pantheon here, Pantheon AMC actually educated me on something in specific. Could you explain to me what happens? to BlackRock's ETF, like their $79 billion exchange traded fund and Vanguard's ETF that's got $80 billion worth of, of funds in it. What happens to it when they hold even one Chinese stock? Could you give us a little breakdown for people that don't know? Based on the information that I've uncovered so far is if any of the securities listed in Executive Order 14032 exist within a bundle of assets, let's say some of those securities exist in an ETF, right then they're not going to say well if it's only three percent of the etf we'll just give you collateral value within u.s soil for 97 percent of it the whole thing becomes worthless for the purposes of collateral within the u.s not that the value of the security is useless anywhere else in the world but within purposes of collateral in the u.s which is what they're being used for they're not going to figure out well this one's this percent and this other one's this percent the whole thing all falls into the same basket based on the information that I've uncovered so far. And I'm happy to provide that information out to people with links to uh, to show the homework. 
No, uh, Pantheon, I've seen it, and you don't need to pull that out right now. I appreciate it. I know that you're not lying to us. Anybody else that doesn't believe it, they can go Google it and go search it for themselves because you're exactly on fucking point. From everything that I've pulled up, uh, on my end as well, that uh, BlackRock and Vanguard are facing to, to offload billions of dollars worth of these investments uh, in order to comply with the United States uh, government's decision to blacklist, blacklist these Chinese companies uh, with military connections. Uh, index providers uh, like MSCI, FTSE Russell, S&P Dow Jones Indices, and JP Morgan uh, in the past announced the removal of several Chinese companies from their indices. Uh, the world's two largest passive fund managers, BlackRock and Vanguard, are particularly affected because of the amount of money that they manage in funds tracking those indices. Um, the executive order will be effective at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time, August 2nd, 2021, so it's already in effect. And U.S. persons will have until 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time on June 3rd, 2022, to divest themselves of securities of companies identified as CCMCs on the annex. Now, boss, for people who look at that and say, well, they've known about this for almost a year now. We're, yep. we're less than they 10 sure days away. Have. Why why haven't they gotten rid of these assets before now? Because they the fucking fact is can't. They <laughs> the fact is they haven't though like right. we look at the last quarterly filings and you can take your take your sample go look at any of the hedge funds that are shorting our stocks look at any of the larger institutions or the or the market makers they're still holding that and their last filings guys for their quarterly filings 13 G's they're still holding these ETFs that contain these stocks they have not diversified yet they have not right. divested themselves and they've known this and it went into effect uh, I believe it was October 2nd, or no, yeah, August. September 2nd, oh, sorry, which gave them 60 days, right, mm -hmm. to, to make, make get to a point where now you can no longer buy or sell those assets, those securities. So yeah. they've known. Sorry, go ahead, Cash. No, you're right. Who would buy that garbage? That's exactly it. It's because people say, well, why didn't they just sell them off? Look, if you're in a position of weakness in business, and you know this is going to be trouble for you down the road. So do all the big players that have the money that would be interested in buying it. And these people aren't going to play fair with each other. They're all killers. That's the fact. That's why they have no more 10 years. It would not matter. So their choice is hold on to them to maintain collateral for this point or sell them within the last 365 days and take an immediate hit on the value of collateral because the cash they would get back would not be dollar for dollar. It'd be pennies on the dollar. They either take the hit while they needed the collateral or they hold on to it hoping they can shake us off. Exactly. And you can even pull it up and see, like, for example, on Wikipedia, the Executive Order 14032 expands the scope of national emergency declared in Executive Order 13959 and prohibits U.S. persons from investing in Chinese companies identified by the U.S. government as having ties to the government, to the Chinese military or surveillance industry. Executive Order 13959 is a United States presidential executive order signed on November 12, 2020 by President Donald Trump. This man left a ticking time bomb because of China's, because of the way that China was, was you know, acting against the United States. Uh, their aggression and basically the issues that happened with due to COVID lockdowns and other macro geopolitical issues uh, as well as tariffs and executive orders have been implemented. Biden talked about re removing some of these tariffs, but it doesn't really make a difference because tariffs don't hurt another country. They simply hurt the person here in America who's buying that item. For example, if you have something imported from China and there's a tariff on it, uh, sure, the, the company from China has to pay it, but they pass that along to the American consumer. A tariff is a tax on our own people. So they would not hurt, hurt or harm China in any way if tariffs were lifted for the majority, for, for the most part. See, so this, ex and this executive order was expanded upon and remains in effect by uh, 14032, prohibiting the, these investments. Go ahead, brother. Well, what did old Yeller say just a few weeks back, right? She was doing a little press conference talking tough about how if China wants to side with 
Russia, then there will be sanctions similar heading their way. Anyways, just basically giving them a warning shot across the bow mm -hmm. saying, don't get involved. Then what do we have happening just recently when President Biden was asked, would you use military might if, if China were to go after Taiwan? He didn't hesitate to say yes. Exactly. Now, his own people have, have since scaled back on that and said, whoa, 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 <laughs> hold on. These messages are coming out pretty clear. So for people to think – and it's a, it's a fair question. For anyone who's asking the question, well, why don't they just kick the can down the road a little bit longer and, and just delay the executive order? You got Biden out there and his tour of, of, of the Asian countries basically saying if they invade Taiwan, we're going to come in with the military. Now his people have tried to scale that back, but he said it. Yeah, I mean these are not messages you put out there to people. Or th Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep talking, brother. It's just a little lag. You, just, you can't take that back. Continue. No. no. No, you can't. That that's it's it's been said, and if that wasn't one of the thoughts in the forefront of their minds, they wouldn't be slipping and saying things like that. So why would they kick the can down the road on this to help out their buddies in China? Nothing they're doing right now would suggest you to think that could it happen. I guess it could happen. Let's be fair, but mm -hmm. nothing they're acting right now gives you that indication. To be fair, absolutely right. And Janet Yellen has told us that the most significant systemic risks to the financial markets are stable coins and over leveraged hedge funds as she's told us this in front of congress testi testifying several times including in september of 2021 uh, during the cares act testimony we heard it live from her and she's continued to reiterate that these sanctions are not going to be extended in the sense that there are always there's always more information coming out and she continued just a couple weeks ago janet yellen came out and said that chinese need to think carefully about what they're doing because they will be sanctioned. And here they are. They, they don't have to sign anything. The president doesn't have to do anything. It's already done. What, what's coming is coming, whether people believe it or not. It doesn't really fucking matter to me. I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm here, not here to provide financial advice of any sort. I think the majority of us here are just to warn people of what's coming, and everyone needs to make their own fucking decision on how they're going to deal with it. Because at the same time, we've got this June 3rd executive order with... Vanguard having billions and billions of dollars, $72 billion in one ETF alone with a 43% exposure to the Chinese market. You know, BlackRock has another one, $70 billion uh, in these, according to the Financial Times. And Vanguard telling us specifically that they will comply, in, in quote, that they will comply with the executive order and continue to monitor the situation to ensure ongoing compliance. In addition, we had BlackRock tell us, sorry, not BlackRock, in addition, we had Fidelity, sorry, Fidelity and E-Trade tell us yesterday. Fidelity and E-Trade told us both yesterday in separate statements. Sorry about that. I'm not trying to show pictures of myself. I was just trying to click over here. That we're seeing executive orders come into play. Fidelity confirmed by sending people a notification that on November 12th, this Executive Order 13959 prohibited transactions by U.S. persons and Chinese companies. And then on June 3rd, Executive Order 14032 came out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this prohibits transactions by Chinese military industrial companies. And so they say, Fidelity has taken measures designed to ensure that its funds and accounts will not acquire any CMICs in contravention of the Executive Order. Fidelity will seek to divest and intends to complete the divestment of any other CMICs holdings, if any, by the applicable divestment deadline under the order. This will create a chain reaction of level crisis. And the key is they will comply. Not that they have complied. They will. So for people, again, saying, why haven't they done it already? Again, you've got these guys coming out right now telling you to your face. We That's will right. comply with, what, 10 days to go? That's right. Damn. It's The wording is very important. The wording is extremely important. They haven't done anything just yet. In addition, we've got... Gee, Pantheon, do you happen to have that handy dandy timeline available somewhere you can drop it in ape chat for me or anything like that i don't know if i don't mean to put you on the spot but a lot of people need to know about the bbig dividend the G gme stock issuance and and everything else and you you summed it up really nicely there yeah it's it's yours you want it there i'll throw it in please give me two seconds thanks brother and 
I keep getting asked this yeah. question. You know, people are like, "Yeah, so you're, are you saying that you're excited for the market crash, and it presents a great purchasing opportunity for meme stock shareholders, GameStop, AMC, BBIG, and a lot of other meme stocks that have run in the past due to this executive order?" And I think I do, and I'm extremely tired of pretending that it's not a good opportunity. Exclusive deep chat. And. They cannot move their collateral earlier when they happened twice before. Why would they be able to do it now? They couldn't Why? do it in January of 2021. They couldn't do it in May of 2021. Biden gave them a fucking year. They haven't divested themselves. You, tech, you check their filings, you'll see that BlackRock sold a measly $370 million worth of this emerging markets crap last month. $370 million worth. What's good is that going to do? They got hundreds of billions of dollars worth of these Chinese stocks. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's better now we're worse. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, it, everything just got better. First of all, I'd just I'd like to say everyone, thank you very much for your support. You know, particularly uh, Eric Viscara, thank you. You know, we, we appreciate all your support and 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 for being here with us. Sesam Dinari asks, all this bullshit. They had a year to save themselves and get out of China. Why should this presidential do, order do anything? And I mean, did they really do nothing to save themselves? Show me what have they done. Go look at their filings. All of these prime brokers and banks. Go look at BlackRock's and Vanguard's recent 13Gs and see if they've sold off. No, they sold off $370 million last month. They still have tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars worth of this shit. Sessoms, thank you very much. Can Biden just quit this order or delay it? Yeah, sure. Cash, Pantheon. What the fuck would China do if Biden extends this sanction, this executive order? Immediately in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> No hesitation, right? No hesitation whatsoever. They'd walk in there and take Taiwan like candy from a fucking baby. Uh, Tyrese, I haven't seen Marco Rubio's letter yet. And the God Pill uh, likes Mullen. I'm a big fan of Mullen as well. Uh, thanks to Pantheon for making this fantastic timeline. The Plunge Protection Team dropped around $50 billion in one day on January 28th. I'm sorry, January 26th, 2022, to save the stock market. It's dropped 13% in one day, and they sold, they sold $50 billion worth of naked shorts on the VIX. Let me pull it up for you. Here's the volatility index. Shot up, and then they sold $50 billion worth of naked shorts on the VIX, and then it caused the SPY to, to run back up from $364.68 all the way up to... Yeah you know, around $420 and change. Uh, and at this moment, it was at $411. It was the daily low was 364.68 on January 26th. We know that this is true because they, the entity that made the sale is listed as on a Bloomberg terminal as an unnamed entity. And the only person or company or corporation that can make a purchase of this size or a sale of this size of naked shorts on the VIX in order to create a gamma ramp on the SPY by volume traders and algorithmic trading is the plunge protection team. And they use our tax dollars, the Economic Stability Fund, in order to do so. We also confirmed this because on January 28th, which is T plus two, the day of trading plus two more days, we saw a 52 week high of naked I'm sorry, of failures to deliver by the U.S. Treasury. You can fucking look up the U.S. Treasury failures to deliver. I don't know if you knew this or not. But they fail to fucking deliver on their naked shorts. The, the, yes, the DTC, the U.S. Treasury, they fail to deliver on their fucking naked shorts. And you can look back. Let's go back six months and look up January 28th. Let's see, January 30th. they robbed us on their banks. They stole from us. Not even looking at the right one here. You know what? Yeah, it's actually here. January. And then what did we see in February? On February 28th, we saw another 52-week high. $76 billion. No, $76 billion worth of failures to deliver. And then what happens at the end of every month? The, the Treasury has to save the stock market, has to cook the books, and pushes out a shitload of naked shorts and had on March 31st, $81.4 billion worth of failures to deliver by saving the fucking stock market. It's happened time and time again, and it keeps happens, it keeps happening over and over again. 
on March 2nd, the executive order was issued for central bank digital currency due in 180 days. Now, Pantheon, you touched, touched on this quite a bit on Pantheon AMC YouTube, right? Can you tell me a little bit about this? We're basically looking like right around the time of, uh, of the, the election, aren't we? Yeah, it's due in September. You know, I know Pantheon's a little busy right now, so I'll just go ahead. Sorry, and... I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the you're talking about the Central Bank Digital Currency Report? Yeah. Yeah, that, so that was an executive order to do uh, to get the DTCC to get in line with figuring out how the advantages and disadvantages, as they put it, for a central bank digital currency. The report's due in six months from when it was first issued as an executive order. Project Lithium was what was kicked off by the DTCC right. to do this report. It would come due September, it's in that timeline, September 5th, September. I think it is. Yep. Um, and then, you know, What's to think what's going to happen right after that? I mean, you, it doesn't mean it's going to wait until that date to come out. But yes, that is the timeline they've established for the executive order to have this report out. In addition, we've got – thanks for that information. That's great. So we're looking at central bank digital currency coming in September. Uh, most likely the report is due then, so it would probably come out a time after that. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of announcement on it, especially if the fiat does happen to you know, uh, go the way of the buffalo – or become hyperinflated due to a, say, short squeeze in the stock market crash. The NSCC proposed rule 2022-003 was posted to the SEC website uh, on April 12th, in which we were also here, uh, you know, commenting against it because it's not in our best interest. On April 20th, we found out that Melvin Capital is due to unwind their current fund on June 30th due to high water mark targets and a new fund to open on July 1st. We've seen since then that I don't believe that they're going to be opening up a new fund, not from the looks of it at this point. Yeah, that, that, that would be new information that hasn't made its way into this, sorry. No, that's okay. All right, let's see. MSNBC, Diamond Hands, The Legend of Wall Street Bets documentary aired on May 15th, 2020, 2022, showing uh, basically a negative uh, you know, viewpoint of meme stocks and derogatory towards investors such as you and I uh, for having the intelligence to realize that these are great hedges to a market crash. Options chain was the lowest it was in over a year on May 23rd, 2022, uh, and options set up to reduce gamma. There's a thrift savings plan. The thrift savings plan for federal employees will be un basically uh inaccessible from may 26th through june 7th and market changes are still going to be reflected so if the if your account makes money you're going to make money after june 7th if you're can we talk about money, that for one sec yes we can so while we're on the thrift savings plan do you mind if we interject a little bit on that boss please do okay so as people alluded to here in the chat that uh, back in 2021, around May 2021, Marco Rubio led a bipartisan um, bill, which was to ban TSP board from steering federal retirement savings into Chinese companies. It was called the Taxpayers and Saving Savers Protection Act. And that didn't get the traction that they were hoping to. But what they were trying to push back in May 2021 was that they didn't want to have um, access for American American uh, retirement funds, the TSP plan, to go there. Now, after that, we had a group of seven senators who wrote a letter, and it was a great letter. I've went through it on, on the show. I'm, it'll take too long to read here today, but basically what it was outlaying was how um, companies like Didi, who went in, had an initial public offering, raised $4.4 billion. And this all ties to the TSP, guys. Just bear with me. Mm -hmm. They raised $4.4 billion in the IPO, and then instantly, two days after that IPO, then this, the, China's government came in and said, we're going to have to investigate you guys because we're worried you're going to have an issue with cybersecurity. And then $3 billion of that, 4.4, instantly went to the CCP as a fine. So basically, 3 to $4 billion of that, $4.4 billion, 3 to $4 billion was from a direct American investment, and that went straight to the CCP. Now, just yesterday or the day before, we have Didi finally announcing they're going to uh, extract themselves off the New York Stock Exchange and relist in Hong Kong. And that whole issue is about an interim rule on the SEC, that uh, interim final rule, which is effective as of May 5th, I believe, 2021, 
that, that basically says there's reporting principles that you have to follow everybody. And we know those principles and those transparency requirements aren't adequate enough as they stand. And even that, they weren't even following those. Some of these foreign companies that come in and invest in the New York Stock Exchange in American soil. And they weren't even giving the proper transparency requirements that already existed, which we know were insufficient for retail. Those people now are bailing and rather than just saying, yeah, we'll, re we'll, we'll report the way you need us to, they're bailing off those exchanges, taking all that IPO investment money yeah. with them, which is a terrible, brutal thing. Now, how does that all tie together? That's the example the senators were giving as to why we shouldn't allow these investments to come into these companies. Now, the thrift savings plan tomorrow, May 26th, is the last day to make transfers between different mixes of investments or change contributions. It's the last day to contact the TSP via telephone yep. until G uh, June 7th. So you can't even call them on the phone, guys. And we're not trying to spread FUD. We're trying to inform everybody. So if you still have loved ones or family members with TSP plans, which is U.S. military or government employees, um, make sure they have a take a look at this. Because the only fund, the only option within the TSP that has international exposure is the I fund, the letter I fund, I for international. It's the International Stock Index Investment Fund. It tracks equity ownership for non-U.S. companies. The rest of them don't have this. So it's just the I fund to take a look at. I'm not saying get out of it, get into it. We're just saying be aware of this and make your own informed decision. The I fund returns move up and down with the returns of the MSCI EAFE. So that index will rise and fall the value of the U.S. dollar as it decreases or increases relative to the value of the currencies of the countries represented. So this I fund is the riskiest of all the investments. Sometimes risk pays off. But in this case, as you go into a recession, and by the way, when you go back and take a look at 2008, when we had the last major crash, what happened to the I fund? It absolutely tanked. It went down 40% right off the bat, and it took the longest of all of the funds to recover after things came out of 2008. So not only is it the riskiest, but it also took the most pain back in our last recent relevant example. And we know this because as right now, the value of the US dollar, I'll just take it from the Canadian side, right? The Canadian dollar is decreasing drastically now compared to the US dollar, as are other uh, currencies across the world. And those currencies are part of the the i fund the international fund it's it's investment securities and it's also currencies so as the us dollar continues to increase because of what's happening right now and it is compared to other international currencies guys the fund value of the if also decreases so just taking out of for a second the executive order and all the things that are happening right now which are all things you should be talking about just as, a, as an investment, we have proof of recent relevant experience that in 2008, that was the hardest hit fund period and took the longest time to recover back. Just keep that in mind, right? Because okay. currently, sorry, okay. Cash. And back then, it only had 3.8% tied into China as an example. Now it's 7.5% within that fund. And it's passively managed, which means it remains fully invested during all market cycles and economic conditions. So this is just something for people to have in their mind. Are you invested in the I fund? And then ask yourself, is that something I want to be in? Take a look at the 2008 history of it. Look at what happened. Look at it relative to the other funds. Just ask yourself these questions is all we want people to do because we want you to protect yourselves. Sorry, I went on a little bit long there, boss. That's perfect. Thank you so much for covering that. You just explained it much more eloquently than I possibly could. Thank you very much, Pantheon. Make sure you guys check out Pantheon AMC on YouTube for a reason. This is a very ed educated individual, and he's in the think tank here with us for a reason. I appreciate your insights on, on this, and, and you're absolutely right, both you guys, Cash and Pantheon, in this sense. Uh, in being invested in the iFund and the Thrift Savings Plan could potentially be extremely dangerous. We've seen in the past, for example, the VXO, which is the VIX before it was created, in the crash of 1987, it ran to 150. We saw it back in, uh, you know, in 2008 when that I fund tanked, like we were just talking about the thrift savings plan. The VIX ran all the way almost up to 87, you know, and then during coronavirus, it ran to 95. This next squeeze, and should we say crash, and these financial runs are unfortunately and sadly going to be much, much worse for the majority of people around the world, and very few people are properly hedged. That being said. That gives, see what people don't understand is that that leaves a pocket of liquidity. There's almost one 
trillion dollars worth in these thrift savings plans. And if nobody can withdraw their money, that's guaranteed margin for market makers and banks and, pro and prime brokers. Guaranteed margin. And guess what else? Guaranteed bag holders that can't pull their money out of the markets. I hope to God I'm wrong. At the same time, United Kingdom has Queen's Jubilee and will be closed in June. But before we get there, BBIG on May 27th. 10 shares of Vinco BBIG equal to one share of Cryptide. That dividend is supposed to be issued, if I'm correct, on May 27th. Is that correct or is it going to be announced on May 27th? I'm not exactly sure because if, if the way I see it, they've already announced it. Are they going to yeah, issue my them understanding on the 27th was it was supposed to be. My understanding it's supposed to be issued the 27th of May, but I heard something on Tony DeNaro's live stream last night, which is also an excellent show, um, that there was something about it being announced on the 27th and then uh, a week later. I have to double check that. I could live with either one of those because even still a week later puts us in the first week of June. And that's, yeah, that's that's definitely, an, it, it leaves us for an interesting time. Uh, let's get, let's click on the Just the to be clear thing. to everybody. Go ahead, the, the deadline for, for buying BBIG to get this, that deadline has passed. So just in case, I see people still asking that question. Yeah, people can still make money, everyone. right? People are still able to make or lose money on the stock or calls or, you know, for example. But they're not able to get the dividend because we are passing yeah, you that. Won't, you won't get the crypto dividend too late. As a matter of fact... I think quite a few of us in the think tank have recently picked up some uh, calls and shares uh, on BBIG. Uh, let's wish us luck to everybody. June 2nd, we have a GameStop annual meeting to vote on the dividend stock split. You know, some people are concerned, like, oh, it's not a stock split, it's not a dividend. I mean, well, yeah, it kind of is, because in order to issue, to issue new shares, they have to do a stock split. So it's, it's a stock dividend in a sense. And then they have to issue new shares in order to make that happen. And boss, this is missing since this is this has been updated, needs to be updated. June first is also the GME earnings, right? So June first, GameStop earnings. Can you say FOMO? June second, annual meeting to vote on dividend. Can you say more fear of missing out as the price will probably be stair stepping pretty hard by then? And June third, presidential executive order one four zero three two on threat from Chinese securities activates. Wow. And like we like we saw in May and June of last year, what happened to the stocks before? What happened to AMC and GameStop, uh, you know, in the week before the executive order took place, May 27th and January 28th? Shit like this, where GameStop ran up 27 fucking percent in one day. This is the kind of shit that happened. What else happened? AMC started running up 13 percent. Yeah, it drives me a day. No, uh... They are fucked. We're going to be so fucking rich. Get the fucking money printer out your own pile because you're going to need it. You're going to have so many fucking dollars to print out to bail out these assholes. You might as well just go on hyperinflation bro, through bro, the roof bro, right now. Bro, bro. <laughs> That's right. Now, some people may not understand. Well, is it really going to be that many short squeezes? Well, do you guys remember what happened last time? You know? Uh, we had to go, uh, should I say broker dealers had to collude with market makers in the White House to go position close only. January 28th, people were selling partial shares of their, they were unable to sell certain things at certain times. Excuse me, that's not even the right one. People were unable to, to buy shares of GameStop for less than $5,124 a share. Here's one guy that sent it to me in the think tank that on January 28th, 9.34 in the morning, he sold a fractional share of GameStop for $5,124.50. He then proceeded to cancel his next order so he could increase his asking price. This, in my opinion, is the beginnings of what happens before this executive order comes into play. Uh, on June 30th, 2022, Melvin unwinds current funds, private books close, along with any dirty secrets. That's a great point possible synthetics who knows but even if they do close shorts must cover uh however if a company's liquidated there probably won't be a whole lot of uh whole lot of a paper trail after the fact 
considering how many of them are been burning down recently, like the TD Ameritrade building or the, yeah, the TD Ameritrade building in Bartlett, Illinois, for example. July 1st, what's this? New and I'm adamant. Phone? Go ahead, brother. Well, that, 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 that's, that's old information. Now that we've, since this was made, we've since heard that Melvin's actually apparently not reopening that's the next correct. day. At first, they were going to close June 30th, reopen July 1st. Now I believe it's moved to June 11th for their final liquidation. But June 11th, and I'm, I'm adamant that what these people are afraid of is not the amount of money that's going to have to be printed and, and paid out to us. It's what we're unveiling. It's the information. It's the whole dirty system, yeah. right? And if you've got a private fund who's closing their books, what better place to, and that's tinfoil hack guys, what better place to conceal a problem that you don't want identified? Now you can look at the volume that would take place in the event that something were to have the MOAS, right? You could look at the, I'm being very careful with my words here, guys. You could be very, you could be looking at the volume and see for yourself how many times a float traded over and ask yourself, is, is that, is that, are those synthetic shares? I mean, for the people that want to say, how do you prove it? But with that said, if you want to conceal right where these things were traded from that's a easy way to do it again that's tinfoil hat just spitting that out i just want people to start thinking i like that and you know the thing is everything's uh conspiracy until the proof is out in the open much like amc and gamestop were all conspiracy until january of last year and june of last year now all of a sudden the naked shorts are not so conspiratorial are they the married puts are not so conspiratorial and we can actually see them on the chart. A lot of people are unaware that you can see certain things like that on the chart. For example, uh, you can see the uh, married puts affecting the implied volatility in a sense. And let me see if I can pull that up for you guys as well. well yeah, like who would have ever thought they would pull the buy button, really? It was dirty. It was dirty because that's all they could fucking do. Here we go. Here's a few steps. Steps to hedge fund success. Dilute and naked short AMC. Create married puts to hedge against massive call volume to counteract the delta from calls. Watch the IV increase. Try to survive the gamma launch of calls going into money when you get fucked by an executive order. Purple line on my screen is the implied volatility of AMC. Look at the divergence from the stock price. The relative volatility index here in blue as well, it shows that it's extremely oversold at its current target. The only reason the IV would be this high on a stock that's price continues to trade in a sideward, sideways trend is because the cost of puts that are married to the calls volume from retail investors such as us allows them to kind of hide naked shorts and create naked shorts. It's a way of kicking the can because at some point Either the price catches up to the implied volatility or the implied volatility catches up to the price. The last time we saw this, it was a pretty quick and violent price movement that we saw to catch up to it. And the divergence was a fraction of what we're currently seeing. And we're still not even in June yet. It's still, what is this, the fucking third, fourth? It's still barely the fourth week of May. There's five weeks in this month. Technically, uh, we've got quite a ways to go yeah. before June 3rd. Yeah, everything is collapsing, and we're not even there yet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the U.S. Treasury <laughs> continues to sell naked shorts and, and influence our stock market and, and basically plunge our markets via the plunge protection team, while China is forcing their richest people and officers and their families to divest themselves of all offshore equities, stocks, and property so that they don't lose billions and billions of dollars in the way that Chinese billionaires did, I'm sorry, that Russian billionaires did when Russia invaded Ukraine. Because China 
is poising themselves to take Taiwan. If America were to extend Executive Order 14032, it would show that Biden has absolutely no fucking spine and China would invade Taiwan and take it like candy from a baby. And on that note, I think we're going to be so motherfucking rich. I don't even know a better way to say it. So goddamn rich, my word is the president. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. By order of the president, we're going to be so fucking rich. Have a great day, everybody. I wish you peace and wealth. Because it's only a matter of time. We've got midterms. We've got July 11th, SEC consolidated audit trail. The new CAT system is implemented for full customer and accounting reporting for all brokers. The DTCs. Phase six full implementation comes into play on September 1st, 2022. $8 billion plus firms included. Uh, all of them, all of the $8 billion and up firms are included. Margin required for $50 million trades. Exposure limit comes into play. Massive, massive changes in our financial st system and our stock market. It's the new central bank digital currency report on the future of, mo of money and payment systems. Executive order deadline is September 5th, 2022. Thanks to Pantheon AMC, check them out on YouTube and you'll learn more about that as well. Uh, so we're looking at a uh, extremely short term time frame here of stock market collapse possible, you know, uh, short squeeze, extremely possible, mother of all short squeeze, exceedingly possible, Chinese invasion of Taiwan and Russian, uh, you know, taking of Ukraine, both exceedingly possible. Uh, God damn, we're going to be fucking we, rich. We never had more until now. And then the amount of calls and the call options that are currently hitting, uh, you know, these stocks has uh, definitely been increasing. Have a great day, everybody. Well. Squad. I'm like so goddamn rich. Rich. So goddamn rich. Two third, baby. Let's go. Cherry on the top, Saganti Capital has been restricted from trading by Bank of America City Group. I want my Another fucking money. Dust. Oh, Griffin, I want my fucking money. Yo, motherfucker.